way up to that bracket there and grab around. Okay? Project manager Ben Ko from Kuala Lumpur leads the team tasked with finishing the job. Everyone is exhausted and even the workers are exhausted. You know, but you, you've got to put yourself together and uh, I think the key for this to achieve this is actually to, to be focused. Track supervisor Javier Barajas from Chicago must produce the perfect grass track. You can call it adrenaline, I call it a nervous wreck. Um, like every race, it's a real deep breath and... <sighs> For the opening ceremony, pyrotechnics legend Phil Grucci from New York plans an unprecedented fireworks display. It's quite elaborate, and if you had to put it on that scale of difficulty, the degree of difficulty, it's at the top end of the echelon. Before the pyrotechnics, Hungarian fighter pilot Laszlo Toth will lead a spectacular air show. You need to be a bit crazy to do this, yeah. These four are just part of an international team of thousands. They'll all share the monumental challenge of completing Maidan in just seven days. High above the race course, project manager Ben faces the ultimate makeover. What's left to go? I think the major component for this area here is the ceiling, the walls, and the floors. Ben has a long way to go to finish Maidan's sky bubble. At almost three football fields long, this complex web of over 5,000 glass triangles literally hangs from the roof. In one week, this five-star banquet hall will cater to 3,000 VIPs. Three o'clock, are we taking up to this point? Yeah. One, one. VIPs who've already bought tickets. Ben's team must complete walls, floors, lighting, air conditioning, escalators, toilets, and much more. All the material, right, ready? No, but uh, what about the voice? I think the major challenge for this project, everyone will agree, is the time. We were given so little time to complete such a big task. It's time. I think you talk to everyone, the contractor, everything, they're always bugging with you. Time. Time. Unfortunately, that's the only thing that we can't give them. Their has been set and we have to complete it, we complete it on time. For Maidan, time has always been a challenge. Three years ago, ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, stunned the racing world. He announced the building of a giant race course to host the 15th Dubai World Cup. The news also surprised the designers of Maidan. They'd asked for five years to turn this into this. With two years shaved off their schedule, the construction team launched into overdrive. Workers drove 7,500 foundation piles in just three months, anchoring Maida in a sea of sand. Work then turned to the main building. With an army of 5,000 toiling day and night, this stretch of desert became one of the busiest building sites on Earth. Maidan took shape. Workers completed the structural skeleton on the 1.6 kilometers of Maidan's main building, including the 10-story racecourse grandstand and the world's first trackside luxury hotel. More than a year of building later, the greatest challenge still lay ahead. The architects designed the roof in the shape of a crescent, the symbol of power and strength in the Eastern world. Weighing more than 6,000 cars, it spans over 400 meters, longer than the Eiffel Tower is tall. It rests on just 12 supports. At each end, it cantilevers a world record breaking 84 meters into thin air. 
The team raised the entire roof in just three months. Using vast manpower and near 24-hour shifts, the Maidan team achieved the impossible. Now, seven days from the opening, the exterior of the Maidan grandstand nears completion. But the interior remains a hollow shell. This room is a preparation kitchen for the whole bubble restaurant. Wall tiles, ceiling and floor. And uh, in order to close the ceiling, I've got to fix all the light points and everything. Yeah, I've got six days left to finish all this. I think we can make it. We have to put in a lot of man hours. Uh, people are working day and night, 24 hour shift, just to finish this area. I'm freaking out now, seriously. I'm very nervous, but yeah, hopefully we'll get there. Yeah, we will, we will get there. We will. We will. Let's go. This is Ben's first job as a project manager. No, target, target. So far, I think this is probably the biggest challenge I have, I've had in my life. All right. Ben's international workforce makes communication difficult. But he knows how to get his point across. But it's just going to be loud. Once you're allowed to listen, that's all. You just tell them the only few keywords. Finish the job for me now. That's it. Get him to finish it all. There, there, there. Every hour, every minute really means something to me. I I can't lose every hour, I mean, everything has to finish, time by hours, no way. Outside, the clock also ticks for track supervisor Javier. But if, if you need Marcelo, you can, you can go get him, okay? His father took care of Chicago's famous Arlington Park turf course, where Javier learned his trade. I don't know if it's in the blood, because if my son wants to be a track superintendent, I'm going to smack him across the head and say no. Javier had to build a world-beating turf track in a desert, which only six months ago was a parking lot for cranes. Using high-tech turf machines, two Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water every day, and round-the-clock love and attention, Javier succeeded in greening this desert. His challenge now, to perfect this track for the world's fastest horses. And the heat is on. It's struggling, you know, and there is, there is a lot of stress on it. You can see the tips starting to get yellow and even, and even burnt just from the, how hot it's getting. I mean, it's 95 degrees and the, the right grass doesn't like this kind of heat. For Javier, no detail is too small. Give it full throttle, Bobby, but go half accelerator. Right. You're in a hurry to go nowhere, right? right. <laughs> Javier measures perfection in millimeters. We were mowing it twice a day, and you can see I'm only getting like a quarter of an inch. It's almost like a, a, la a lady that goes get her hair, her hair cut. You know, get rid of the split ends. The grass is only half of Javier's challenge. He also has to perfect the soil. That's a good six, seven inches of, of roots. And see how it breaks apart so easy? You just touch it, it almost, it almost melts. If the turf is soft, it will slow the horses. If it's too hard, slightly uneven, or has even the tiniest pothole, it risks the health of some of the world's most expensive animals. Right there. Going in real good. Javier will soon find out if his track can live up to the title of the ultimate race course. In six days, ready or not, Maidan opens to the world. The teams in charge of the opening ceremony have no time to lose. With an estimated price tag of $60 million, 
Maidan's opening ceremony won't just be big, it'll be Olympic. Every time you want to reuse it. And that's exactly why this guy's here. Zach's out with someone. Here's a little title. Phil Grucci has painted the sky at five Olympic opening ceremonies, seven presidential inaugurations, and the opening of Dubai's Palm Jumeirah, the biggest fireworks show ever. For Maidan's Big Bash, Phil sets his sights on another first. A mile-wide falcon, drawn entirely with fire. What we're trying to do is create the image of the falcon from the sky. Uh, when you look at this, uh, this facility, the car park that's in the back of the grandstand, the shape of it is in the falcon. Uh, the wing feathers, the head, the eyes, the beak. And what we're doing is we're basically following the outline of all of those I-beams and uh, box beams, the steel beams that make up this car park. Each one of those 700 locations will fire in a very precise sequence that they'll go from the inside out so it'll make it look like the falcon's wings are actually unfurling and pushing. And then the soundtrack that we have, it's been designed, you have that big whooshing noise. So as the falcon goes, you'll hear whoosh. And the fireworks and pyrotechnics will be doing the same thing. What kind of movement? Do those it's a mind-boggling feat of precision pyrotechnics. I know, we're going to all line up. Yeah. You guys are making good progress, huh? Well, we Phil to... has pictured it hundreds of times in a virtual environment. But he won't know if it works for real until the big night itself. We just came from the chairman once to do another demo tonight at around 9 o'clock, which would only be uh, about 30... 50 shot comets only, no aerial shells, just the 50 shot comets. We don't have an opportunity to shoot such a large program once and twice to, to, uh, to make those adjustments. So that's what makes it exciting. We have one shot at it. So the pressure is much greater, but the rewards are also there as well. Phil to Ian, come back. Maidan will broadcast its grand opening to the world. That's crossing over. That's when and the Phil, the giant up. falcon, will set a pyrotechnic record, but only if it flies. Phil's team will install 20,000 live detonators, connecting them with over 300 kilometers of cable, all coordinated with over a thousand specially designed computers. The logistics alone are a blast. At the airfield near Maidan, another team prepares for the opening ceremony. Captain Laszlo will lead his squadron in a stunning performance. This is no floor show. It's a squadron of microlite airplane pilots. They are the most amazing guys. They, they look ugly, really, <laughs> on the face, but, but they are amazing guys with a good heart. 98% or 100% of them spend all his life in aviation, and they love their aircraft, so they are sort of married to their aircraft. Their aircraft, the Apollo Jetstar. Weighing under 500 kilograms, these machines can fly two men with a powerful Rotax four-cylinder engine. On the big night, they'll try to pull off a mini aviation world first. A death-defying routine above the Maidan Grandstand in 15 microlite planes with fireworks shooting from the wings. We always choreograph it. It looks like dancing together. So we choreograph everything on proper timing on the ground. And we do this usually like three, four times daily. The problem is only half of Laszlo's microlites have cleared customs. As a former Hungarian fighter pilot, he spent close to 30 years in the air but he's never tried something like this. Nor has his squadron. It's, we are very close to impossible. <laughs> Laszlo's aeronautic dream is becoming a nightmare. Five days to go, and the stars of the show arrive. 
Each thoroughbred can be worth up to $15 million. They even have a world-class concierge. Maidan's international stables manager, Fergal Cooper. There'll be occasions when something will pop up that they need, and that could be anything to do with going to the track or a horse being injured and need a vet or a farrier. It's about just putting them at ease straight away so that they know who to come to if they need anything. Today, Fergal checks in a plane load of guests. OK, guys. How have the travels? Good. Who's this here? Spanish. Spanish moon. All right, OK. Yeah. Any of you guys swim, no? Swim? No, not people, horses. <laughs> This horse hotel even has a pool. This guy's just about to swim. You can see him. He's got no problem. He's pretty used to it. He'll swim every day. Probably do two or three laps in the pool. Once he gets the water above his knees, he's pretty happy to get in there and swim. Racehorses in general have very fragile legs. And the daily impact of training on the different surfaces um, can cause injury, you know, minor and major. But it's one of those things that people wouldn't realise that goes on behind the scenes is, the, is swimming, you know. And um, a lot of races uh, won because a, a trainer has access to a pool. In weather like this, when you have uh, these horses swim, you nearly feel like getting in there yourself. <laughs> then a morning wash and a gourmet meal. And at Maidan stables, horses can get whatever they want. Some trainers put in mints into horses' feet. We even had um, trainers down in the other facility, the Byworld Cup, I think it's a horse from uh, Japan, and they feed um, quail eggs. When these horses race, they'll run on a high-performance surface called tapita. And Michael Dickinson is in charge of this synthetic track. My goal was to produce a synthetic surface as good as grass. Now, we're not quite there yet. But having said that, we're better than grass when it rains, and we're better than grass when it doesn't rain because it gets too hard. It's about 80% sand. We have five different types of fibres to bind it together. We have a little bit of rubber and some PE and three different types of waxes. But the formula, though, is a bit like the formula for Coca-Cola. We don't tell everybody. Tapita has a few key benefits. It's much safer for horses than the dirt it replaces. And it only needs 10% of the water that grass requires. My goal here was to produce uh, a level playing field for all the horses from around the world. It shouldn't be hard and it shouldn't be loose and cuppy. You've seen um, uh, a sprinter from the blocks. He gets down and he pushes off with his... Well, a horse does that every stride with his hind legs, but he must have stability to push himself off. So that's what we're aiming for. Three days to go. The world's most luxurious race course enters the home stretch. Designers set solid gold fixtures and fittings into the building's detailing. Maidan's 15 elevators each feature Swarovski crystal-filled handrails and screens with racing coverage. In fact, at Maidan, you can watch the racing from pretty much anywhere. One of seven world-class restaurants, the balcony of your five-star hotel room, even a rooftop swimming pool. But you'd better bring your wallet, because on the big night, a trackside hotel room will set you back $3,000 and a corporate suite up to $5 million. With 72 hours to go, one vital VIP area is far from finished. The strain on project manager Ben is beginning to show. I've been shouting at the workers, trying to organize work cleaners. Uh, we have like 200 cleaners every day. Clean the glass, clean the floors, pack up things, you know, get the things out of the way. That's why I lost my voice. <clears throat> Luckily, his voice hasn't been lost in vain. Miraculously, the sky bubble is taking shape. We've got to stop all the touch-up work and everything tonight. So tonight we'll pack up, lay the final carpet, Take down on scaffold, tomorrow the caterer will come in and they will do all the setup. The only activity tomorrow will be clean up, cleaning. That's it. 
final. Even the kitchen that was worrying Ben is shaping up. Everything's ready to run and go. They just put up, put all their fixing and everything, we're, we're okay. Just when all seems to be going Ben's way, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed makes a last minute request. He'd like to use one of the Sky Bubble's VIP cocoons for the big night. The cocoons are pods of glass suspended from the crescent roof. After the royal suite, they'll be Maidan's most luxurious space. Unfortunately for Ben, they're also Maidan's least finished. This is a VVIP cocoon level 10. We're working 24 hours now, just to keep this place ready. Yes, pretty much, it's impossible. Yeah, but we will, we will finish it. The team has to lay carpet, install the ceiling and lights, and even build the bathrooms. Ben's also worried about the climate control. We have to energize the air conditioning tonight. Okay, latest, latest tomorrow morning. All right, to keep it running and test it for, for the World Cup. But this place, without air conditioning, it won't work. VVIP, they have to be comfortable. Ben has only 70 hours, not just to finish this room, but to transform it into something that meets with royal approval. We just got to believe it will be done. And it shall be done. 48 hours to go. And Captain Laszlo still only has half his planes to rehearse with. It's, we are very close to impossible. <laughs> The rest are crawling through customs. All the performance teams begin gearing up for a full rehearsal tonight. Laszlo must get his planes released, or the team will go into the opening ceremony dangerously unprepared. On the same night, the other opening ceremony teams rehearse their parts in the performance. Phil goes through some pyrotechnic plagues. Javier gives his grass one more trim. The horses and jockeys test the turf before the big day. It's time for our best turnout horse. Even the grandstand LEDs and light shows get a workout. With half his microlights still in customs, Laszlo nervously waits for his pilots. Hello, Debbie, this is the microlights here. He even struggles with basic communication. You cannot do control with so many people talking in the radio. In the opening ceremony, the squadron must have perfect timing to avoid Phil's pyrotechnics blowing them out of the sky. But they haven't received their cue. Absolutely no communication with this Debbie. I'm trying to talk since 6, 10, 15 minutes. Nobody's answering me. The squadron arrives, but they've missed their cue for this final rehearsal. And stress is taking its toll. We have a, a lot of tension during the shows. I mean, uh, the last couple of days, um, you see, I don't have hair. I lost all my hair during these shows. The Maidan Racecourse opens in just 24 hours. As supplies for the big night flood in, an army of over 1,000 cleaners must still pull off the ultimate spit and polish. More than half a million pieces of cutlery need to be shined, together with 200,000 plates, cups and saucers. Television screens all around the world will check out the racetrack. So, Maidan's track supervisor leaves nothing to chance. I'm really happy where it's at. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for more, but I still want more. Javier feels the pressure of ensuring the safety of the world's most expensive horses. It, uh, you can call it adrenaline, I call it a nervous wreck. This grass is a labor of love for Javier, absorbing every waking hour for the last few months. Like a parent raising a child. I mean, even when you send your kid to college, you still, 
worried what he's doing in school. What uh, is, is he doing good grades? Uh, it's kind of I can't believe I'm comparing this to my my two ki my two children. No wonder they get jealous of this grass. High above the turf, it's crunch time for Ben. And we've got to do it, everything, for the next 24 hours. Well, no, less than that. It's probably the next 12 hours you've got to finish and pick up and go. Construction in the Sky Bubble's main hall is now complete. I don't know, I think just clean up the place and uh, make sure all the water supplies are okay, all the sockets are working. It's more of a, um, the operational checking. But upstairs, the VIP cocoon is a long way from the finish line. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed arrives in 20 hours with his guests. Ben's team must lay the carpet, finish the bathrooms, and place the furniture. This is the one room that still needs the royal treatment. If I tell you that I always believe we can finish this, I'll be lying. All right. There are, there are always moments where I think I can't do this anymore. Seriously, I mean, looking at the work, looking at the logistics, looking at the people around you, everyone is exhausted, and even the workers are exhausted. You know, but you, you've got to pull yourself together, and uh, I think the key for this to achieve this is actually to, to be focused. Ben's moved mountains to get the project this far, but now every second counts. Six forty five AM today, Maidan opens to the world. The race course is ready. Construction is finished. The sky bubble is ready to receive its three thousand guests. All that's left to tick off is the VIP cocoon lounge. By working through the night, Ben's team has performed a miracle. Two weeks ago, everything's in a mess, all right? And uh, nobody believed that, you know, we can finish this. And, and all the outsiders who came, and when they come to this place, they just shook, they just shook their head. Ben proves all the critics wrong. The ultimate race course is shining and complete. The paying public waits to see Maidan in all its glory. The opening ceremony teams must now match the construction feat and put on the ultimate performance. At the airfield, Team Microlite is behind the eight ball. Although Customs has finally released all the aircraft, the squadron has only one practice run at their daring maneuvers. Laszlo's team must fly over the grandstand at the exact moment the leader of Dubai finishes his speech. The duration of which is impossible to predict. Laszlo's squadron can't physically hold their circling position in the air for more than 30 minutes. He tries to confirm when the speech will end. But the event coordinator, Debbie Cronshaw, won't commit to a time. I'm not, I'm not going to give you any time. I can't. I can't see if there's too long circling information. How long can they hold? They can hold for half hour, but physically they cannot hold because of the nature of staying in formation for such a long time. So. So if you can give me like no. 30 minutes earlier. No. I, so again, on the night, I don't know if the race is running later. This is so difficult for me. Go over that roof. Debbie will say. Laszlo it. manages to negotiate a 30-minute holding pattern with a catch. Yeah, it's going to be okay. an approximate 30. With hours to go, the odds seem stacked against Laszlo. Yes. At the race course. Phil arrives for a final setup of his groundbreaking pyrotechnic display. 
the, our credibility is, is, is only as good as our last performance. It takes more than 1,000 mini computers to coordinate the complex sequence. But only one fried circuit to ruin the show. The computer says there's something in there and it's not supposed to be in there. If you've got the correct file file, the correct product up here, then you should be getting 100% continuity. What we're in fact getting is on one module, 17 to 32 are failing, and then on the next one, 17 to 32 are showing up as invalid. As Phil and his team race the clock, the horses move from the stables to beneath the grandstand. They're shielded from all the noise and excitement by two kilometers of soundproof tunnels. Outside, Javier's grass gets its first test. Up into the gate. Can I? Thank you. When they do, they'll be set. The gates fly and they're racing in the Elgar Sprint of 2010 and the starter caught them to a great line. Seven races lead up to the World Cup, totaling over $25 million in prize money. The evening climaxes with the $10 million Dubai World Cup, where first place wins six million dollars. Seventy thousand race fans from around the world have arrived to watch the world's richest horse race and for a taste of racing luxury. In total nearly 100,000 meals will be served. Fans will also devour thousands of the world's finest oysters and some of the best caviar money can buy all washed down with over half a million dollars worth of champagne. And staff will make sure Maidan's big day goes smoothly. California flag, traversing on the inside for Joy and Fun in front. It's good for Hong Kong. Joy and Fun beat Traversi and California flag. And the atmosphere is electric. There's just three hours and four races to go to the Dubai World Cup. 12 kilometers away at the airfield, Captain Laszlo's pilots return from their final test flights. The most difficult part is that we don't know uh, the exact time when we should be above the location, which is extremely difficult to move 15 aircrafts in the air, and we don't know the exact time when to come. If the weather is windy and, and it's quite turbulent, then it's very difficult to, to keep the formation in one. Uh, so uh, I'm really hoping that the wind direction stays like this and it stays calm and, and smooth. Uh, then we will have a beautiful formation, otherwise we will be like the goose, you know, <laughs> over the lake, so we'll see. But just minutes later, in a cruel twist, the weather changes. Wind is picking up, <laughs> no good. And in the desert, that's a recipe for a sandstorm. The world's richest race starts in 90 minutes. When it ends, fans look forward to a spectacular finale. But the looming sandstorm could jeopardize Phil's extravaganza. Right now, the sandstorm seems like it's, uh, it's settling down a little bit, but I think I may be just a little bit hopeful. <laughs> so the wind is still up, but uh, you know, as we still got another hour and a half until showtime, so we're hoping that it may die down a little bit in our favor. Other thing else, right now, everybody's in their places, security is in their places. All the pyrotechnicians are by their firing consoles and just waiting for the kill. 2050 is our target time. There's nothing you can do now. It's like a machine that's uh, that's running down on a 45 with no brakes. So there's really nothing you can do. We just monitor, uh, make sure everybody's in their place. The wind's coming from the air, so I have blown towards like the uh, Camaro C8, just to let you know. Okay, it's not blowing towards the grandstand, so. Negative, towards C8. 10, 4, thank you. The wind of change blows well for Phil. But for Captain Laszlo and his Microlite team, it could spell disaster. Uh, Laszlo is in, Laszlo's airborne and standing by. We could have a potential delay. In this wind, it's hard for them to hold formation for any length of time. 
Laszlo tries to contact his team as they struggle to hold formation in the high winds. They are just lazy to press the button, you know, to answer me. And they know they are killing my nerves. The longer they hold, the greater the risk of something going wrong. The whole display is at the mercy of the event coordinator and her five-minute standby call. All Laszlo can do is wait. Laszlo to Debbie, team standing by for five-minute call. Come on. It is Beneath him, the ceremony begins. Debbie Laszlo standing by. Laszlo finally gets the cue, but late. Pilots are behind schedule. How far away are they, Lester? Start the cut alik nek. Burr zöldin do most. Burr zöldin do most. If they can't make up the lost time, the big moment could be ruined. Egy kurva kérdés nem lehet. Kurva nem lehet. Ten minutes helicopter focus start at the cue. Pilots desperately fight to gain ground. Laszlo is helpless and can only watch the dark sky in hope. They're really late. They can only do a two-minute sequence, Laszlo. Only a two-minute sequence and they're both clear. Laszlo, have you got that? Yes, I got that. The guys are over the spot within 15 seconds. Finally, the microlites appear, much to the relief of Laszlo and the crowd's delight. The pilots ignite their fireworks. But all's not well. Wrong with the fire. Half of the squadron's fireworks failed to ignite. Laszlo has no time to dwell on mistakes. In mere seconds, tons of explosives will fill the air, and his pilots must be clear. Suddenly, Phil faces his own deadly crisis. Yes, please. As Phil prepares to detonate his pyrotechnics, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and his entourage head unexpectedly towards the car park, right below thousands of Phil's explosives. He's got a hole. No. Phil must act fast. We're getting message that the Sheikh is coming out of the front of the building, right into the Falcon. Falcon's on hold right now. Are we clear? Not here. Are we clear right now, though? Is he not out yet? Are we clear? Find out if we're clear right now. All Phil's plans could go up in smoke. Just hold him. We've got two minutes. Stand by Ian for instructions. What's the status? Okay. With less than a minute to go, Phil still waits. Yeah, okay. So we're clear? Is it clear? Yes, no. With just 16 seconds left, Phil gets the all clear and arms his explosives for the finale. Is it clear? Yes, clear, yes. Okay. Go ahead. 10 seconds. It's all systems go. But will the Falcon take flight? Generations of experience. 
Phil and his team pull off a perfect pyrotechnic performance. Laszlo breathes easy too, now that his pilots are safe. And his evening holds a silver lining. It was amazing, but we just got a call from Europe from our friends that we got live on CNN, BBC, NBC, uh, Dubai Sports Channel. So our friends were watching it all we over the world. We were expecting one feed. We've got five global feeds. It's, it's, it's great, it's just, just fantastic. It's the end to a roller coaster ride of a day for Laszlo. It always happens, that's, that's the thing. I mean, we have so much difficulties, you cannot imagine, but, but it always happens. Millions of viewers worldwide and 70,000 fans at Maidan are waiting for this moment. The next two minutes will make racing history and make someone six million dollars richer. They're racing in the Dubai World Cup. Like the race to finish Maidan itself, the Dubai World Cup comes down to the wire. A fitting climax to an incredible night. And a fairy tale opening for Maidan. I'm still really excited. And I don't think I can sleep tonight, you know, even though I'm I mean mentally exhausted, physically exhausted, but see the excitement will just keep me going all night long and trust me, we're gonna party the whole night. It feels really great. It feels uh I'm all, I'm overwhelmed. I'm really happy. It doesn't seem, sound like it, but yeah, I, I mean, I can breathe. All the hard work pays off. The Maidan team celebrates the world's richest race and a worldwide success.
or has even the tiniest pothole, it risks the health of some of the world's most expensive animals. Right there. Going in real good. Javier will soon find out if his track can live up to the title of the ultimate race course. In six days, ready or not, Maidan opens to the world. The teams in charge of the opening ceremony have no time to lose. With an estimated price tag of $60 million, Maidan's opening ceremony won't just be big, it'll be Olympic. Every time you want to reuse and that's exactly why this guy's here. Here's a little title. Phil Grucci has painted the sky at five Olympic opening ceremonies, seven presidential inaugurations, and the opening of Dubai's Palm Jumeirah, the biggest fireworks show ever. For Maidan's Big Bash, Phil sets his sights on another first. A mile-wide falcon, drawn entirely with fire. What we're trying to do is create the image of the falcon from the sky. Uh, when you look at this, uh, this facility, the car park that's in the back of the grandstand, the shape of it is in the falcon. Uh, the wing feathers, the head, the eyes, the beak. And what we're doing is we're basically following the outline of all of those I-beams and uh, box beams, the steel beams that make up this car park. Each one of those 700 locations will fire in a very precise sequence that they'll go from the inside out so it'll make it look like the falcon's wings are actually unfurling and pushing. And then the soundtrack that we have, it's been designed, you have that big whooshing noise. So as the falcon goes, you'll hear whoosh. And the fireworks and pyrotechnics will be doing the same thing. What kind of movement? Do those it's a mind-boggling feat of precision pyrotechnics. I know, we're going to line that. Yeah. You guys are making good progress, huh? Well, we had Phil has out. pictured it hundreds of times in a virtual environment. But he won't know if it works for real. Weighing more than 6,000 cars, it spans over 400 meters. Longer than the Eiffel Tower is tall. It rests on just 12 supports. At each end, it cantilevers a world record breaking 84 meters into thin air. The team raised the entire roof in just three months. Using vast manpower and near 24 hour shifts, the Maidan team achieved the impossible. Now, seven days from the opening, the exterior of the Maidan Grandstand nears completion. But the interior remains a hollow shell. This room is a preparation kitchen for the whole bubble restaurant. Wall tiles, ceiling and floor. And uh, in order to close the ceiling, I've got to fix all the light points and everything. Yeah. I've got six days left to finish all this. I think we can make it. We have to put in a lot of man hours. Uh, people are working day and night, 24 hour shift, just to finish this area. I'm freaking out now, seriously. I'm very nervous, but yeah, hopefully we'll get there. Yeah, we will, we will get there. We will. We will. Let's go. This is Ben's first job as a project manager. No, target, target. So far, I think this is probably the biggest challenge I have, I've had in my life. All right. Ben's international workforce makes communication difficult. But he knows how to get his point across. But it's just going to be loud. Once you're loud, they listen, that's all. You just tell them the only few keywords. Finish the job for me now. That's it. Get him to finish it off. There, there, there. Every hour, every minute really means something to me. I, I can't lose every hour. I mean, everything has to finish. Time by hours. No way. Outside, the clock also ticks for... All the way up to that bracket there and grab around. Okay? Project manager Ben Ko from Kuala Lumpur leads the team tasked with finishing the job. Everyone is exhausted and even the workers are exhausted. You know, but you, you've got to put yourself together, and uh, I think the key for this to achieve this is to, to be focused.
track supervisor, Javier Barajas from Chicago, must produce the perfect grass track. You can call it adrenaline, I call it a nervous wreck. Um, like every race, it's a real deep breath and... <sighs> For the opening ceremony, pyrotechnics legend Phil Grucci from New York plans an unprecedented fireworks display. It's quite elaborate, and if you had to put it on that scale of difficulty, the degree of difficulty, it's at the top end of the echelon. Before the pyrotechnics, Hungarian fighter pilot Laszlo Toth will lead a spectacular air show. You need to be a bit crazy to do this, yeah. These four are just part of an international team of thousands. They'll all share the monumental challenge of completing Maidan in just seven days. High above the race course, project manager Ben faces the ultimate makeover. What's left to go? I think the major component for this area here is the ceiling, the walls, and the floors. Ben has a long way to go to finish Maidan's sky bubble. At almost three football fields long, this complex web of over 5,000 glass triangles literally hangs from the roof. In one week, this five-star banquet hall will cater to 3,000 VIPs. Three o'clock, are we thinking up to this point? Yeah. One, one. VIPs who've already bought tickets. Ben's team must complete with track supervisor Javier. But if, if you need Marcelo, you can, you can go get him, okay? His father took care of Chicago's famous Arlington Park turf course, where Javier learned his trade. I don't know if it's in the blood, because if my son wants to be a track superintendent, I'm going to smack him across the head and say no. Javier had to build a world-beating turf track in a desert, which only six months ago was a parking lot for cranes. Using high-tech turf machines, Two Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water every day and round-the-clock love and attention. Javier succeeded in greening this desert. His challenge now, to perfect this track for the world's fastest horses. And the heat is on. It's struggling, you know, and there is, there is a lot of stress on it. You can see the tips starting to get yellow and even and even burnt just from the how hot it's getting i mean it's 95 degrees and the the right grass doesn't like this kind of heat for javier no detail is too small give it full throttle bobby but go half accelerator right. you're in a hurry to go nowhere right <laughs> right. javier measures perfection in millimeters we were mowing it twice a day, and you can see I'm only getting like a quarter of an inch. It's almost like a, a, la a lady that goes get her hair, her hair cut, you know, get rid of the split ends. The grass is only half of Javier's challenge. He also has to perfect the soil. That's a good six, seven inches of, of roots. And see how it breaks apart so easy? You just touch it, it almost, it almost melts. If the turf is soft, it will slow the horses. If it's too hard, slightly uneven, walls, floors, lighting, air conditioning, escalators, toilets, and much more. All the material, right, really? No, but uh, what about the voice? I think the major challenge for this project, everyone will agree, is the time. We were given so little time to complete such a big task. It's time. I think you talk to everyone, the contractor, everything. They're always bugging with you. Time. Time. Unfortunately, that's the only thing that we can't give them. Their has been set and we have to complete it. We complete it on time. For Maidan, time has always been a challenge. Three years ago, 
ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, stunned the racing world. He announced the building of a giant race course to host the 15th Dubai World Cup. The news also surprised the designers of Maidan. They'd asked for five years to turn this into this. With two years shaved off their schedule, the construction team launched into overdrive. Workers drove 7,500 foundation piles in just three months, anchoring Maidan in a sea of sand. Work then turned to the main building. With an army of 5,000 toiling day and night, this stretch of desert became one of the busiest building sites on Earth. Maidan took shape. Workers completed the structural skeleton on the 1.6 kilometers of Maidan's main building, including the 10-story racecourse grandstand and the world's first trackside luxury hotel. More than a year of building later, the greatest challenge still lay ahead. The architects designed the roof in the shape of a crescent, the symbol of power and strength in the Eastern world. 